After an almost four and a half year long wait, Transformers Rise of the Beast finally hit theaters. And boy, it was definitely worth the wait. I ended up going to the theater with friends and family two times last week, since this film is by far one of my favorites. I personally place it under the original trilogy since those films were my childhood, so of course I'm going to be a little biased there. Now something I really like about this film was its ending and post credit scenes, with one in particular setting up something really big for the future of this new rebooted continuity. Now if you haven't watched the film yet, do yourself a favor and please 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 click off this video. Video, since major spoilers are inbound, and it is truly better to see what I'm going to talk about in this video firsthand in the theater instead of hearing it from me. But for those of you who have already seen the film or just want to get spoiled, then stick around so I can explain what went down in Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Yo, Alright, so towards the end of the final battle, Scourge is about to kill Noah Diaz, but at the last second Mirage jumps in to save the day, using his body to shield his friend from the blast. After becoming critically injured and losing a few limbs, Mirage transforms into an exosuit for Noah to use in order to fight the Terracon leader. Optimus joins the fight and the two tag team Scourge, with Optimus delivering the killing blow and destroying the Trans Warp Key, a device that was the only known way for the Autobots to get back to their homeworld Cybertron. He did this so the portal that Unicron was going to use to devour the Earth would be destroyed. After nearly being sucked up by Unicron, the Autobots, Maximals, and Unicron humans make it to a field, where they ponder if Unicron is dead, but Primal knows the truth, telling everyone that the Chaos Bringer is trapped but not dead. After Optimus gives a speech saying that despite them no longer having a way to go home due to the Trans Warp Key's destruction, they have gained humanity as a key ally in the fight against evil. Noah also gives a speech of his own at the end, saying how he will continue to save the universe if it means saving the people he loves. After this, the film comes to a close with a shot of Noah hugging his family. So with this ending recap out of the way, what does this mean for a potential sequel? Well, it's obvious that Unicron is going to play some sort of role, and this is stated at the end of the film since Primal says that evil can never be vanquished completely. He could return. And in response to this, Optimus said, Let him come. United, we will destroy him once and for all. So yeah, without a doubt, we will be seeing more of the Chaos Bringer in the future. As for the Maximals, it's highly likely that we will see them again. However, at the end of the film, the Maximals do stay behind in Peru, while the humans, bots, and Mirage in his exosuit mode travel back to New York. Now, we would get some more information on what would happen to our heroes after the battle, thanks to the two post credit scenes. In one of them, we see Noah working on a very rough looking Porsche. And after his friend Reek comes in saying that there is no way the car will start, Noah calls out Mirage's name, and the car transforms. Now, a lot of people were wondering how in the world was Noah able to rebuild Mirage? And, well, I think I might have the answer. As we know, after Mirage had several limbs shot off of him, he would go on to transform himself into Noah's exosuit. Now, though some thought that this transformation killed him, it clearly didn't since we see him all fine and well right here. And this makes sense since when he turned into the suit, his head, spark, and torso which would contain all of his vital transformery organs was still intact. And since he was able to transform into the suit, who's to say that he couldn't have transformed back into his bot mode after Noah took it off? And this is actually proven to be the case, since in the post credit scene we can clearly see several parts from Mirage that makes up the Porsche, the most evident being the hood and the spoiler. As for how Noah got all these spare parts, it was thanks to Reek, who collected them to make up for bailing on Noah when the cops were chasing him. Now, this presents a very interesting concept where a Transformer can use spare parts that aren't Cybertronian in nature in order to repair themselves, which I find to be a pretty neat idea. And with Mirage being back, this means that we will be seeing a lot more of this Autobot trickster in the future. Now, with this post credit scene squared off, let's move on to the major one that everyone and their dog is talking about. This post credit scene starts off with Noah going to a job interview, and when the guard is letting him in, Noah sees Elena Wallace on 60 Minutes, where she's talking about her discovery of a massive underground catacomb. And this 
was a nice ending for Elena's character, since in the film her boss didn't take her seriously as a historian, so seeing her get the recognition she deserves was a great touch. Now, eventually Noah is let in and he has his interview with this mysterious gentleman. However, the interview takes an interesting turn, since this man knows a lot about Noah that he shouldn't, such as him knowing how Noah helped save the world in Peru, and that Elena was with him. After Noah asks how he could possibly know this, the man would go on to say this, We are a secret government organization, strictly off the books. We specialize in global threats, planetary loss prevention, that kind of thing. We're in the middle of an ongoing war, and we would love to have you join the fight. You and your whole team. You know, the big guys. In response, Noah would say that he didn't know what he was talking about, and the man would reply, that's a good answer. And then would go on to tell Noah that thanks to him saving the world, his organization would fund his little brother's health care. He would then go on to slide over his business card and push an award on the wall that exposed a secret base with futuristic vehicles. He would then say, we could really use someone like you, Noah. Why don't you think about it? As he descended, Noah picked up the card revealing that the man he spoke to was Agent Burke. And when he flipped over the card, we got to see the G.I. Joe logo. Now, this is huge since a lot of things can happen moving forward, and I plan to make a video in the future covering if this is the right step to take for this new Transformers reboot. Now, something very interesting that Agent Burke told Noah in this scene is that they were in an ongoing war, and that having the Autobots on their side would be a great help to them. Now, to our knowledge, the Decepticon army has not made it to Earth just yet meaning that G.I. Joe is not having a war with them. So, who could they possibly be fighting? Well, there's only one clear conclusion, that being G.I. Joe's arch-nemesis, Cobra. Now, as for what this means for Noah Diaz, it's highly likely that we will see him be part of G.I. Joe moving forward. And as for the bots, it's highly likely that they will be joining forces, especially since Optimus now trusts humanity and would naturally want to form an alliance with them. Now, I'll be honest, I'm a little skeptical about them introducing G.I. Joe, mainly due to the fact that they could potentially take away screen time from the bots in future installments. But on the other side of the coin, this this might be something really cool to see in live action, and could potentially be done really well. So I will hold my judgment on this crossover for now, until we have a better idea of how it will be implemented. And just like that, you made it to the end of the video. If you're still interested in some more Transformers content, check out this video where I attempt to solve Transformers 4's greatest mystery.